Good morning. My name is Samuel Bugwa. I can see it is 10 minutes past the hour and we have to start. I'm the one who will be taking cost accounting for this semester. And cost accounting progresses from the financial accounting. And by definition, if you were to remind us, we said that financial accounting is that process of collecting, analyzing, and recording the accounting information for purposes of reporting. So the reason why we go outside there as accountant to collect the information and analyze it is for us to be able to summarize that information into financial reports. Of course, now the financial reports or the statements will be useful to different users, be it internal users or external users. Well, that is financial accounting. Cost accounting, I remember also explaining that cost accounting is that branch of accounting that specifically serves the information that is collected and summarized to the management. In other words, the information here is collected for management use. And we know that management may need the information more frequently to be able to monitor a situation and ultimately make an informed decision. In cost accounting, we'll be analyzing or we'll be looking into various, into various costs and how they impact on the operations of the business for purposes of management to be able to make an informed decision. All along in this class, we'll be talking about costs, the different types of costs, like I have displayed, how they are accumulated, how these costs relate to the different functions of the business. And we'll be looking at the costs now in the manufacturing of the process line. And then there are, after we'll be looking at the standard costing and variance analysis. So I've shared the course outline in the portal and I would urge everyone to go through the portal. The portal is our point of communication. That is the media that has been provided for you to communicate with the instructor. So should you have any question, should you want any clarification, kindly drop me the question or what you need clarified in the portal and I'll be able to respond to. So by definition, I can say cost is the amount of expenditure that is incurred or that is attributable to a specified activity or a product. We have different categories of costs, but before we go there, I want us to compare and contrast cost accounting with financial accounting. Allow me to scroll. Uh, so here we are. I had defined cost accounting earlier, and I've said is that process of now determining the cost of producing a certain product. So by definition, we can say it is the process of collecting, analyzing, and reporting the different costs that are involved in the production of a product or a service. Now we have different terminologies. The first one is a cost. I'll say this is the amount of expenditure that you're going to incur to a specified activity. In other words, 
or in simple terms, we are talking of the component or the quantity used versus the price of a commodity. So when you are talking of the cost unit, a cost unit is a unit of quantity of product or service all time is for purposes of those people who are in the service industry, for example, consultants, which cost are ascertained or expressed. So when the consultant or when you go to an advocate or a lawyer and they allocate you one man hour, there is a standard cost of how they charge. They cannot undercharge. And again, they are not allowed to overcharge. So when you are talking of the cost unit, it is dependent on the nature of the business. For example, in matatu industry, a cost unit could be a passenger's seat. For Kenyozi, the cost unit will be one head. And of course, the rate are a haircut. You know, there are different styles. Then to a hospital, a patient bed, et cetera, et cetera. So that unit of quantity or product or a service that you are getting from the given industry, that's what we are calling a cost unit. Now, cost units will be accumulated to form what we call a cost center. A cost center can be taken as a department. For example, when you go to the progressive institutions, you will find they have the customer care session, and that will be mostly from the entrance. They'll meet the customer care. If the nature of the business is where you need to pay before you obtain a service, it will be closely followed by the account section. If you go to a hospital setup, you'll have the customer care's desk, then they'll usher you in to the triage. Triage is where you go and pay the what do we call it, the consultation fee before you see the physician or the doctor to try and understand your situation and then refer you to the right, to the right department. So a call center is that production or service location or the function where the activity or the item of the equipment may be attributed to cost unit. And I've said several cost units will form a cost center. I go on. If you were to compare cost accounting with financial accounting, I said financial accounting is basically collecting that information and analyzing that information or summarizing it into financial statements for purposes of both internal and external users. Internal users are employees, the owners of the business, and the management. Whereas the external users are the other people like suppliers, the lenders, potential investors, name them. When you come to the cost accounting, you say the information is collected, analyzed, and reported for purposes of internal use only. You can see financial accounting is for both internal and external. Cost accounting is accounting for managers. Later on, it will advance to management accounting. But at this level, know that the information is basically produced or prepared for purposes of internal decision makers of the organization. It should be organization. We go on. Then the second difference, financial information render accounts of stewardship in terms of the profit generated in relation to the assets that were invested in the business. Now this is a balance sheet. We know the balance sheet equation. Assets is equals to capital, plus liabilities. So financial information will be 
interested in knowing what resources or the assets that were tied to the business versus the profit that they were able to generate. When you come to cost accounting, the information or the accounts will aid the management to be able to make a certain decision that will drive at either maximizing the profit or minimizing the cost. You can see financial accounting is purposely comparing the assets that were used versus what they produced. Cost accounting will need this information before they make a decision. If we jump number three and number, you can see if we jump number three and go to number four, financial accounting dwells on historical data. In other words, the activity or the transaction has already taken place. But when you come to cost accounting, information gathering is both historical and future basis. In other words, we are riding on this information that was collected earlier. This is what you are calling the historical data for purposes of forecasting on the future costs. So kindly note that. That's why we are saying financial accounting is for reporting purposes so that the users can be able to make a decision. But cost accounting helps in that decision making. You should be coming from a point of reference to be able to make a decision. So management will be using the historical data to forecast or to make a future decision. Then we say that financial accounting must conform to generally accepted accounting principles. These are the gaps. But when you come to the cost accounting, emphasis is on segment reporting or rather departmental reporting. For example, the HR will need information that will help them make a decision on whether they may need to add more employees or human capital or otherwise. But when you go to the factory line, the factory line manager is interested in the efficiency of the factory. So you get. So when I talk of the segment reporting, it is dependent on who is reporting and what is being reported because the metrics or the measures will not be the same for the different departments. And the last one is financial accounting is prepared at a specified period of time. The standard required period is one year, although most organizations will break the one year into either semi-annually or quarterly. But for cost accounting, this information is prepared as and when it is needed by the management. So the management can require this information daily, weekly, monthly, quarterly, semi-annually. I don't think any serious manager will wait until one year to make a decision. In most occasions, the information here the point I'm driving at is the information or the accounts, the cost accounts are more frequent than financial accounts because management needs this information almost when it is fresh to make a decision. I think that's the difference between the financial accounting and the cost accounting. But this will not do dilute the we are not unlearning what we learned in financial accounting. No, we are just trying to draw a line for purposes of understanding why we are preparing this information. Ora, right, good morning. Energy. Good morning. I can see your mic is on. Kenichi, Mora. I'm talking to you, you are now putting your mic off. Kindly put your mic on.
Mora kindly put your mic on. I had also an option of chatting, but I'm talking. Kindly put your mic on. I go on. Uh, this is like repeating what you said, but in a nutshell, the utilities of cost accounting is for purposes of, it aids the management in planning and control. So it indicates where losses and waste are growing before the work is finished. So the management will be able to take immediate action to minimize losses. Also, the management will consider alternative methods that will make the work easier and more convenient. It will also enable the management to arrive at the best, we talk of the opportunity cost of production where they will go for the next or the best of the options that are available to ensure that they minimize the cost. And it also provides the, what you call the snap periodic profits. So at a point in time, the management will be able to know where the organization or the department because this segment reporting why is the department headed so they can easily quantify weekly monthly or quarterly whether they are headed to the right direction as a segment or a department again the cost accounts will help in identifying the sources of economies in production and the management can take advantage of this. He also presents a comparative cost data for different periods. And this will help all these trend analysis is what helps the management in, in decision making. Now, there are essential elements of effective cost information. And to start with, the statement containing the information should have appropriate heading. And this is for, in other words, when you are talking of the characteristics of good accounting data, it should be relevant. So when we are talking of the appropriate heading, now anyone should be able to understand at a glance should be simple to understand understandability then the officer reporting must be appropriate person in other words they should know what they are doing so that they give us the accurate or the precise information so the information that is prepared should be timely otherwise it will be a waste it will not be useful if you are supposed to serve me with the information to make a decision, if you delay with that information, it means that we won't be able to make the decision at the right time. And then lastly, cost information should be sufficiently accurate so that the right decision and not the wrong decision is taken. Now, costs are classified into various categories. We do classify the cost into behavior. And by behavior, we categorize them into either fixed or variable. Then we have the relevance or the irrelevance of the cost to the decision making. Some costs, if a cost, for example, has been incurred, I've said it will be irrelevant. 
if the decision was not made earlier, we call them the unavoidable or the sunk cost. And then again, we'll need to know whether it is direct or indirect. Direct costs are those costs that can be directly traced to the product or a service. And the indirect costs are those that you cannot directly attribute to a certain product. So in the, by classification, let's start by behavior. And let me see, behavior. So what you've done is to analyze the product cost. This is how we build the cost of one product. I've said we break the cost into either direct or indirect. For example, if I want to produce, let's say, a table or a chair, I'm just giving an example in the carpentry. So the, the cost that will be involved will be direct materials. For example, I'll need pieces of wood for me to produce, to be able to produce a table or any furniture. So that will be direct material cost. The cost that I'll incur to purchase the bow, to purchase the pieces of wood, is a direct material cost. Then I need the carpenter to either, I need the carpenter to bring in the uh, labor. So you need to smoothen the pieces of wood before they are joined together to form a table. So direct labor is what the carpenter will do to the wood to convert it into a table. Then, of course, you are going to have the direct expenses. Direct expenses are the expenses that I know that have to be incurred to ensure that this table is brought into, into, into a product. Then I have indirect material cost. For example, things like nails, you cannot buy one nail. You need to buy nails in quantities. For example, let's take a unit of measure, like one kg of nails. Or glue. Let's say you purchase one liter of glue. One liter of glue may be used for several tables, not only one table. In other words, it should be shared among us the different tables. Doesn't mean that you are going to use the one liter and then whatever remains you throw away. So indirect, you cannot attribute the one liter to this particular bench. It is shared among us the several benches. I don't know whether I'm making sense. Direct labor cost, for example, let's say in the carpentry workshop, we have a cleaner. A cleaner who cleans the front office, who cleans the showroom, and who cleans now the workshop. Can you directly attribute the labor of the cleaner to the bench? It's impossible. So what we normally do is to appropriate and we'll be coming to that later. Same case to the administration cost. Those people who are at the front office are serving everyone. Selling costs, we have distribution costs. All these costs cannot be directly traceable to a product. When we accumulate all these costs, now the first three, direct material, direct labor, and direct expenses form our prime cost. Cost that we should incur if we are to produce the table. Then you have the indirect cost. So prime cost plus the indirect cost or what we call the overheads. And they are called overheads because you are going to allocate them dependent on how or the, the, the formula that the organization has put in place. So together, prime cost plus the indirect cost or the overhead makes the total cost of a product. You are categorizing this cost. And the first category is by behavior. And behaviorally, cost is categorized into either fixed, variable, or mixed. A fixed cost is a cost that tends to remain unchanged. 
it is constant. For example, whether you are whether the carpenter is producing tables and selling them or not, if they are in a rental property, they have to pay rent. True or false? You cannot wait until the month end to tell the landlord, Najua I table, so I won't pay the rent. No, you have to pay. Taxes. The government will come in, you have to pay. You have to pay the salaries. You have to depreciate your machines. I'm just giving examples. These are costs that you have to incur. But this does not mean that the fixed cost cannot change. Of course, depending on the operations, could be you are using, let's say, 10 employees this month. You've gotten a contract and you need to produce more tables, let's say, for a dining hall of a given school. You are going to increase the labor, isn't it? In other words, fixed costs can change. And when it changes, it precipitates into what we call the step cost. I don't know whether I have a... So you can see the fixed costs are here. They don't change. Irrespective, they remain constant. But I've said there are scenarios where you may need to increase the capacity. And when you increase the capacity, then it means that your cost will shift. So you can see what is happening. For example, you have the supervisor cost. So you can see the number of workers. You said we've improved the capacity. So initially, our costs were at this level. They will shoot and go up. So it's like we are forming step cost. This is well demonstrated. Mm, so those are the step costs. Now committed costs are these costs that are already incurred. So you have to incur them. Managerial costs, I've said that you have to also pay the salaries, whether you are producing the tables or not. And then you have the discretionary cost. You are also fixed costs. And these are programmed costs. And the an issue of what we call the policy, the uh, policy issue. So if the policy in your department requires that you set aside 100,000 for research, maybe of the current trends in the carpentry, in the carpentry industry, then the discretionary cost will be part of your fixed cost. The second category are variable cost. Variable cost from the word is what is varying. These are costs that are varying. So a variable cost is said to be the cost that changes proportionately with the different level of output. So I've demonstrated here in different images. So I have the first image. You can see the Variable cost is showing a linear relationship. In other words, the unit produced is directly proportional to the cost that are incurred. By linear, I mean the line is almost straight. Then I have the second one, which is non-linear. And you can see the variable cost exhibiting, uh, we are seeing the cost and the unit produced are increasing at an increasing rate. But look at the third one. At some point, and this is how most products will behave. We've reached a saturation level, and you can see now our, our curve is like it has stabilized. We'll be coming to CVP analysis. I don't want to introduce it at this level, but know that variable cost will behave in different manner. They are either linear or they'll have a non-linear relationship depending on the level of output. Then you have the mixed cost. <clears throat> and mixed cost will be now a combination of the fixed and the variable cost. So we'll be having the semi-variable, we are going to have the semi-fixed. When you bring them together, then we'll be having the curve behaving in that manner. You can see the curve is not starting from the origin or the zero. It's now this is our cost and this is the output. Our x axis is the level of output or activity, and the y axis is our cost. In other words, it's fluctuating. 
and this can only be given in a production setup. So it'll be coming to that and we'll see how they behave. The second category, we say that cost can be depending on the decision that the management want to make. For example, we have the product and the period cost. We have the product cost are those that are, we've said that the product cost is what or the prime cost that you are going to incur to produce the product for resale. If we take, for example, a manufacturing organization or a factory, the cost will be what can be attached to the product. So what we are going to incur to bring the product into use is what we are calling the product cost. Now look at the period cost. These are costs that are not included in the inventory or the stock valuation. And as a result, they are treated as expenses in the period in which they are incurred. Let me take you back to the factory line. All manufacturing costs will be product cost, but all the non-manufacturing costs are period cost. So companies operating in the factory will be able to classify what is directly traceable to the product. When you come now to the distribution chain or the merchandising sector, the purchase price of the goods <coughs> will be traded at product cost. But we have to load the administration and the selling or the distribution cost for us to make a profit. Let me take you back. In a bakery, let's say we are producing bread. I'm going back to the cost built up. So here we are. Let's say this is a bakery, or we are producing breads for resale or for sale. If you go to Let's take a company like Broadways. Broadways will buy the wheat flour. They'll buy the baking powder. They'll buy the sugar, the salt, ETC. Those are direct materials. They are going to add to the factory line workers. Those are the ones who produce the or who give the uh, labor directly to the bread, those who are doing the mixing, the kneading, of course, the baking. Direct expenses will be anything that will be involved here. You get? So these are our prime cost. Now we have the indirect materials that could be used in the, for example, if you are using, let's say, baking powder, and baking powder is used to produce several breads. You cannot attribute it to a given bread. Now forget about that. I'm trying to say the product cost will be what will be incurred until this point. So direct material, direct labor, we have the direct expenses, indirect material, and direct labor cost. When we come now to the period cost, period cost, are those that will be involved in the distribution channel. So they start here, administration cost, selling cost, distribution cost. So look, the cost of producing one bread will be, let's say, let me write here. Let's say cost of producing the bread is 35 shillings, but you need an extra cost to send that, to sell that bread or to reach the distribution chain will incur 10 shillings. So these are the selling and the distribution cost to one bread. So that by the time you are getting the bread to the consumer, it will be costing 45 shillings. But 45 shillings is not enough. We are in business of producing and selling bread. So if you sell it at 45 shillings, 
you will not be in any business. So you might decide to have a markup of five shillings, which is your profit. So this is the profit. I want to show you how we are in business. And therefore, your bread will be retailing at 50 shillings. That's how we build the cost. So you can see we've come from the point of direct material, direct labor, direct expenses. We've added the indirect cost and the indirect labor. Then we've loaded the other overheads, administration cost, selling cost, distribution cost. That is not enough. Because our purpose is selling the bread and making profit, we've loaded our profit. Therefore, the bread will cost 50 shillings. I think that is enough, even if you were to end the lesson at that point. But let's, let's look at the, those uh, period costs. Then we have the opportunity cost. An opportunity cost is the cost of the best for a gone alternative. So we normally say it is the next best. So it is the benefit loss if you are to reject the best competing or that alternative and choose another one. For example, a manufacturer can sell a semi-finished good at 100,000. However, the manufacturer has also an option of finishing that product and enjoy the entire profit altogether. So opportunity cost will be finishing instead of selling the semi-finished. Because these are decisions that managers have to make and they'll always lean to the situation where the business is benefiting. Be coming to that. Then we have the sunk cost. I say sunk costs have already been incurred and therefore they are unavoidable. We normally say sunk costs are unavoidable costs because they are past costs that were already incurred. For example, the purchase of, let's say, plant and machinery. The only other thing that you can do is either improve the plant and machinery's efficiency, or you abandon it and buy another one. Then you have the relevant and the irrelevant cost. A relevant cost is a cost that will Im impact on the decision making. So if, the manager makes that decision and it helps improve, let's say the profits that you would have reported is a relevant cost. Irrelevant costs are those costs that will not, now the choice of going for those decision will not change anything. Now, for example, if you are faced with a choice of making a journey using your own car or using a matatu, the car tax and the insurance cost are irrelevant, isn't it? Whether you use the matatu or you use your own car, you have to pay the insurance, isn't it? Whether you left your car at home so that you can save, you want to buy fuel. But if you are to buy, if you are to leave your car at home and use a matatu to save your money, because a matatu will be cheaper, Although inconvenient, then it will be a relevant cost. Are you getting? Then you have the incremental and the marginal cost. Incremental cost, or what you call the differential cost, these are costs where the, it is the extra cost that you are going to incur if you increase output. Now we normally talk of the marginal cost as the cost of producing an extra one unit. So the cost of producing an extra one unit is marginal cost. But if you add all the marginal cost, whatever you are going to get is the incremental cost. Are we together? I'm waiting for it to sink. So incremental cost may or may not include the fixed cost, depending on the analysis of the management. So if costs change because of that decision, then the increase in the cost presents the incremental cost, but you say it is not a must. I've said marginal cost is that cost of producing an extra one unit 
if for example the production line is meant to produce 100 units if you produce 101 unit if the cost of producing the 100 unit was 10 shillings per unit you are going to incur 1000 if for example you produce at 1005 and you produce let's say 101 item the cost of producing the extra item will be 5 shillings that will be our marginal cost. We're coming to that later on. Then you have imputed cost. And these are costs that will be incurred in some transaction, but they are relevant to the decision making pertaining the particular situation. So traditionally, the, 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 the cost will not form or conform to what we call the convention of the accounting. For example, interest of internally generated funds will not be guided by the policy. For example, we know central bank is the one that regulates how different uh, products are supposed to be given as credit facility. If, for example, you had a circle and you want to give your employees money from the circle as loan, you can give them even at 1%. Are we there? Shardan cost, and these are the costs that will be incurred in case of stopping the manufacturing of product. Or if you close down a division. So shutdown cost will always be fixed cost because the manufacturing has been stopped. So the variable cost that would have been incurred will not be incurred. So what will be incurred, that's why we are saying is fixed cost. Good example are rent, security, property taxes, we'll incur them unless you close shop and take those items elsewhere. Then you have cost control and cost reduction. When we do the comparative analysis, the manager will be able to know where to touch and what not to touch. So we have the different tools that we use in making the cost reduction work for us, but save that for the next period. So in a nutshell, this is what you've covered. So we've, we've, we've agreed that the difference between financial accounting and cost accounting is the users. Financial accounting is for internal and external, but cost accounting is specifically for management to aid in decision making. So they are going to split the cost into different categories and they'll be able to analyze and make a decision that best suits their situation. And that's all about the introduction to cost accounting. Any question? I'll share the notes in the portal. I'll also give a forum for discussion. I say the portal will be a point of mediation. That's where we'll be talking that's why we'll be making any communication for purposes of this unit, the cost accounting. Otherwise, enjoy your weekend. Any question? Christine, you are well? I call your name, you are mute. You are late into this class. I apologize. Eugene Omondi. Eugene, how are you? Zaitun? Now I call your name, I'm calling the register. So when I go to mark the register, if you didn't answer, the assumption is you are not in this class. There was a Henechi Mora, no longer here. Yes, Eugene, you're also late into this class. You slept in, Ulila Lasana. <laughs> so you carry on from there. Enjoy your weekend. Okay.